Now it came about after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, that David stayed two days in Ziklag. And on the third day, behold, a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn in dust on his head. And it happened when he came to David, he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. Then David said to him, From where do you come? And he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. David said to him, How did things go? Please tell me. And he said, The people have fled from the battle, and many of the people also have fallen and are dead, and Saul and his son Jonathan are also dead. Then David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? The young man who told him said, By chance I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, and behold, Saul was leaning on his spear. And behold, the chariots and the horsemen had overtaken him. When he looked behind himself, he saw me, and called to me. And I said, Here I am. Then he said to me, Who are you? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. And he said to me, Please stand next to me and finish me off, for agony has seized me because my life still lingers in me. So I stood next to him and finished him off, because I knew that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown which was on his head and the band which was on his arm, and I have brought them here to my Lord. Then David took hold of his clothes and tore them, and so also did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the people of the Lord and the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. Then David said to the young man who informed him, Where are you from? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. And David said to him, How is it you were not afraid to reach out with your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of the young men and said, Come forward, put him to death. So he struck him and he died. And David said to him, Your blood is on your head, because your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have finished off the Lord's anointed. Then David sang this song of mourning over Saul and his son Jonathan, 18 And he told them to teach the sons of Judah the morning song of the bow, Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. Your beauty, Israel, is slaughtered on your high places. How the mighty have fallen! Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice, the daughters of the uncircumcised will celebrate. Mountains of Gilboa, may there be no dew nor rain on you, or fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. From the blood of those slaughtered, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return unstained. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and delightful in life, and in their deaths they were not separated, they were swifter than eagles, they were mightier than lions. Daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet, with jewelry, who put gold jewelry on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle! Jonathan is slaughtered on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan, you have been a close friend to me. Your love for me was more wonderful than the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war have perished. Then it came about afterward that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to one of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. So David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. And David brought up his men who were with him, each with his household, and they settled in the cities of Hebron. Then the men of Judah came, 
and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, It was the men of Jabesh Gilead who buried Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead, and said to them, May you be blessed of the Lord because you have shown this kindness to Saul your Lord, and have buried him. And now may the Lord show kindness and truth to you, and I also will show this goodness to you, because you have done this thing. Now then, let your hands be strong and be valiant, since Saul your Lord is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner the son of Neb, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbosheth the son of Saul and brought him over to Mahanaim. And he made him king over Gilead, over the Asherites, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, even over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he became king over Israel, and he was king for two years. The house of Judah, however, followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Now Abner the son of Neh, went from Mahanaim to Gibeon with the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul. And Joab the son of Zeruiah and the servants of David went out and met them by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down, Abner's men on the one side of the pool and Joab's men on the other side of the pool. Then Abner said to Joab, now have the young men arise and hold a martial skills match in our presence. And Joab said, Have them arise. So they got up and went over by count, twelve for Benjamin and Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve from the servants of David. And each one of them seized his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side, so they fell down together. Therefore that place was called Helketh Hazarim, which is in Gibeon. That day the battle was very severe, and Abner and the men of Israel were defeated by the servants of David. Now the three sons of Zeruiah were there, Joab, Abishai, and Asahel, and Asahel was as swift-footed as one of the gazelles that is in the field. Nineteen Asahel pursued Abner and did not turn to the right or to the left from following Abner. Twenty then Abner looked behind himself and said, Is that you, Asahel? And he said, It is I. So Abner said to him, Turn aside for your own good to your right or to your left, and take hold of one of the young men for yourself, and take for yourself his equipment. But Asahel was unwilling to turn aside from following him. Then Abner repeated again to Asahel, Turn aside for your own good from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I show my face to your brother Joab? However, he refused to turn aside, so Abner struck him in the belly with the butt end of the spear, so that the spear came out at his back. And he fell there and died on the spot. And it happened that all who came thereafter to the place where Asahel had fallen and died, stood still. But Joab and Abishai pursued Abner, and when the sun was going down, they came to the hill of Amma, which is opposite Jaya by way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the sons of Benjamin gathered together behind Abner and became one troop, and they stood on the top of a hill. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Should the sword devour forever? Do you not realize that it will be bitter in the end? So how long will you refrain from telling the people to turn back from pursuing their kinsmen? Joab said, As God lives, if you had not spoken, then the people of Judah certainly would have withdrawn in the morning each from pursuing his brother. So Joab blew the trumpet, and all the people halted and no longer pursued Israel, nor did they continue to fight any more. Abner and his men then went through the Arabah all that night, so they crossed the Jordan, walked all morning, and came to Mahanaim. Then Joab returned from pursuing Abner, but he gathered all the people together, and nineteen of David's servants were missing, besides Asahel. 31 However, the servants of David had struck and killed many of Benjamin and Abner's men, 360 men were dead. And they carried Asahel away and buried him in his father's tomb, which was in Bethlehem. Then Joab and his men traveled all night until the day dawned at Hebron. 
Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, and David became steadily stronger, while the house of Saul became steadily weaker. Sons were born to David in Hebron, his firstborn was Amnon, by Ahinoam the Jezreelitess. And his second, Chilib, by Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom the son of Maka, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. And the fourth, Adonijah the son of Haggith, and the fifth, Shephatiah the son of Abidal. And the sixth, Ithrim, by David's wife Egla. These sons were born to David in Hebron. Now it happened that while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner was strengthening himself in the house of Saul. Seven and Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizbah, the daughter of Aya, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? Then Abner became very angry over Ishbosheth's question and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I show kindness to the house of Saul your father, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not let you fall into the hands of David, yet today you call me to account for wrongdoing with that woman? May God do so to me, and more so, if as the Lord has sworn to David, I do not accomplish this for him. To transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to establish the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. And Ishbosheth could no longer say a word in response to Abner, because he was afraid of him. Then Abner sent messengers to David at his place, saying, Whose is the land? Make your covenant with me, and behold, my hand shall be with you to bring all Israel over to you. And he said, Good. I will make a covenant with you, only I require one thing of you, namely, that you shall not see my face unless you first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, when you come to see me. So David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife Michael, to whom I was betrothed for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Ishbosheth sent men and had her taken from her husband, from Paltiel the son of Lish. And her husband went with her, weeping as he went, following her as far as Bahurim. Then Abner said to him, Go, return. So he returned. Now Abner had a consultation with the elders of Israel, saying, In times past you were seeking for David to be king over you. Now then, do it. For the Lord has spoken regarding David, saying, By the hand of my servant David I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines, and from the hands of all their enemies. Abner also spoke to Benjamin, and in addition Abner went to speak to David in Hebron everything that seemed good to Israel and to the entire house of Benjamin. Then Abner and twenty men with him came to David at Hebron. And David held a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Abner said to David, Let me set out and go and gather all Israel to my lord the king, so that they may make a covenant with you, and that you may be king over all that your soul desires. So David let Abner go, and he went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from a raid and brought a large amount of plunder with them, but Abner was not with David in Hebron, since he had let him go, and he had gone in peace. When Joab and all the army that was with him arrived, they informed Joab, saying, Abner the son of Nech came to the king, and he has let him go on his way, and he has gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came to you, why then have you let him go? so that he is already gone. 25 You know Abner the son of Neb, that he came to gain your confidence, and to learn of your going out and coming in and to find out everything that you are doing. When Joab left David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner, and they brought him back from the well of Sira, but David did not know about it. So when Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside into the middle of the gate to speak with him privately, and there he struck him in the belly, so that he died on account of the blood of his brother Asahel. Afterward, when David heard about this, he said, I and my kingdom are innocent before the Lord forever of the blood of Abner the son of Neh. May it turn upon the head of Joab and on all his father's house, and may there not be eliminated from the house of Joab someone who suffers a discharge, or has leprosy, or holds the spindle, or falls by the sword, or lacks bread. So Joab and his brother Abishai killed Abner because he had put their brother Asahel to death in the battle at Gibeon. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes and put on sackcloth, and mourn before Abner. And King David walked behind the bier. And they buried Abner in Hebron, and the king raised his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. 
And the king sang a song of mourning for Abner and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put in bronze shackles, as one falls before the wicked, you have fallen. And all the people wept over him again. Then all the people came to provide food for David in his distress while it was still day, but David vowed, saying, May God do so to me, and more so, if I taste bread or anything else before the sun goes down. Now all the people took note of David's vow, and it pleased them, just as everything that the king did pleased all the people. So all the people and all Israel understood on that day that it had not been the desire of the king to put Abner the son of Nah to death. Then the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a leader and a great man has fallen in Israel this day? And I am weak today, though anointed king, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too difficult for me. May the Lord repay the evildoer in proportion to his evil. Now when Ishbosheth, Saul's son, heard that Abner had died in Hebron, his courage failed, and all Israel was horrified. And Saul's son had two men who were commanders of troops, the name of the one was Bana, and the name of the other Rechab, sons of Rimmon the Berethite, of the sons of Benjamin, for Beeroth is also considered part of Benjamin. And the Berethites fled to Gitaim and have lived there as strangers until this day. Now Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was disabled in both feet. He was five years old when the news of Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel, and his nurse picked him up and fled. But it happened that in her hurry to flee, he fell and could no longer walk. And his name was Mephibosheth. So the sons of Rimmon the Berethite, Rechab and Bana, departed and came to the house of Ishbosheth in the heat of the day, while he was taking his midday rest. And they came to the interior of the house as if to get wheat, and they struck him in the belly, and Rechab and his brother Bana escaped. Now when they had come into the house, as he was lying on his bed in his bedroom, they struck him and killed him, and they beheaded him. And they took his head and traveled by way of the Araba all night. Then they brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron, and said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life, so the Lord has given my lord the king vengeance this day on Saul and his descendants. But David replied to Rechab and his brother Bana, sons of Rimmon the Berethite, and said to them, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from all distress. When the one who informed me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, also viewed himself as the bearer of good news, I seized him and killed him in Ziklag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have killed a righteous man in his own house on his bed, shall I not now require his blood from your hands and eliminate you both from the earth? Then David commanded the young men, and they killed them and cut off their hands and feet, and hung them up beside the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the grave of Abner in Hebron. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. Previously, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and in. And the Lord said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will be a leader over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them before the Lord in Hebron, then they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he became king, and he reigned for forty years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah for seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned for thirty-three years over all Israel and Judah. Now the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, and they said to David, You shall not come in here, but even those who are blind and those who limp will turn you away, thinking, David cannot enter here. Nevertheless, David captured the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. And David said on that day, 
whoever strikes the Jebusites is to reach those who limp and those who are blind, who are hated by David's soul, through the water tunnel. For that reason they say, people who are blind and people who limp shall not come into the house. So David lived in the stronghold, and called it the city of David. And David built all around from the millow and inward. David became greater and greater, for the Lord God of armies was with him. Then Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David with cedar trees, carpenters, and stonemasons, and they built a house for David. And David realized that the Lord had appointed him as king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. Meanwhile David took more concubines and wives from Jerusalem, after he came from Hebron, and more sons and daughters were born to David. 14 Now these are the names of those who were born to him in Jerusalem, Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Nepheg, Japhia, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. Now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek out David, and when David heard about it, he went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines came and overran the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will certainly hand the Philistines over to you. Then David came to Baalperazim and defeated them there, and he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like the breakthrough of waters. Therefore he named that place Baalperazim. And the Philistines abandoned their idols there, so David and his men carried them away. Now the Philistines came up once again and overran the valley of Rephaim. 23 So David inquired of the Lord, but he said, You shall not go directly up, circle around behind them and come at them in front of the Baca shrubs. 24 And it shall be, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the Baca shrubs, then you shall act promptly, for then the Lord will have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. Then David did so, just as the Lord had commanded him, he struck and killed the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. Now David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. Two and David departed from Baal Judah, with all the people who were with him, to bring up from there the ark of God which is called by the name, the very name of the Lord of armies who is enthroned above the cherubim. They had mounted the ark of God on a new cart and moved it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were leading the new cart. So they brought it with the ark of God from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Ahio was walking ahead of the ark. Meanwhile, David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of juniper wood, and with lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. But when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out toward the ark of God and took hold of it, because the oxen nearly overturned it. 7 And the anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah, and God struck him down there for his irreverence, and he died there by the ark of God. Then David became angry because of the Lord's outburst against Uzzah, and that place has been called Perez Uzzah to this day. So David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? And David was unwilling to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David with him, but David took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Now it was reported to King David, saying, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him, on account of the Ark of God. So David went and brought the Ark of God up from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with joy. 
And so it was, that when those carrying the ark of the Lord marched six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fattened steer. And David was dancing before the Lord with all his strength, and David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with joyful shouting and the sound of the trumpet. Then it happened, as the ark of the Lord was coming into the city of David, that Michael the daughter of Saul looked down through the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she was contemptuous of him in her heart. Now they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent which David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of armies. Further, he distributed to all the people, to all the multitude of Israel, both to men and women, a cake of bread, one of dates, and one of raisins to each one. Then all the people left, each to his house. But when David returned to bless his own household, Michael the daughter of Saul came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel dignified himself today. For he exposed himself today in the sight of his servant's female slaves, as one of the rabble shamelessly exposes himself. But David said to Michael, I was before the Lord, who preferred me to your father and to all his house, to appoint me as ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. So I will celebrate before the Lord. And I might demean myself even more than this and be lowly in my own sight, but with the female slaves of whom you have spoken, with them I am to be held in honor. And Michael the daughter of Saul had no child to the day of her death. Now it came about, when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies. That the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I live in a house of cedar, but the ark of God remains within the tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But in the same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Five foot go and say to my servant David, This is what the Lord says, Should you build me a house for my dwelling? For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up the sons of Israel from Egypt, even to this day, rather, I have been moving about in a tent, that is, in a dwelling place. Wherever I have gone with all the sons of Israel, did I speak a word with one of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, this is what you shall say to my servant David, this is what the Lord of armies says, I myself took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be leader over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have eliminated all your enemies from you, I will also make a great name for you, like the names of the great men who are on the earth. And I will establish a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and not be disturbed again, nor will malicious people oppress them any more as previously. Even from the day that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also declares to you that the Lord will make a house for you. When your days are finished and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you, who will come from you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me, when he does wrong, I will discipline him with a rod of men and with strokes of sons of mankind. But my favor shall not depart from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever, your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and all of this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then David the king came in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, Lord God, and who are the members of my household, that you have brought me this far? And yet this was insignificant in your eyes, Lord God, for you have spoken also of the house of your servant regarding the distant future. 
And this is the custom of mankind, Lord God. Again what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, Lord God. For the sake of your word, and according to your heart, you have done all this greatness, to let your servant know. For this reason you are great, Lord God, for there is no one like you, and there is no God except you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation on the earth is like your people Israel, whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, and to make a name for himself, and to do a great thing for you and awesome things for your land, because of your people whom you have redeemed for yourself from Egypt, from other nations and their gods. For you have established for yourself your people Israel as your own people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. Now then, Lord God, the word that you have spoken about your servant in his house, confirm it forever, and do just as you have spoken. So that your name may be great forever, by saying, The Lord of armies is God over Israel, and may the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, Lord of armies, God of Israel, have given a revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house, therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. Now then, Lord God, you are God, and your words are truth, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. And now, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing may the house of your servant be blessed forever. Now it happened afterward that David defeated the Philistines and subdued them, and David took control of the chief city from the hand of the Philistines. And he defeated Moab, and measured them with the line, making them lie down on the ground, and he measured two lines to put to death, and a full line to keep alive. And the Moabites became servants to David, bringing tribute. Then David defeated Hadadezer, the son of Rehob king of Zobah, as he went to restore his power at the Euphrates river. And David captured from him 1,700 horsemen and 20,000 foot soldiers, and David hamstrung almost all the chariot horses, but left enough of them for a hundred chariots. 5. When the Arameans of Damascus came to help Hadadezer, king of Zobah, David killed 22,000 men among the Arameans. Then David put garrisons among the Arameans of Damascus, and the Arameans became servants to David, bringing tribute. And the Lord helped David wherever he went. David took the shields of gold which were carried by the servants of Hadadezer, and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Beda and Berothai, cities of Hadadezer, King David took a very large amount of bronze. Now when Toy king of Hamath heard that David had defeated the whole army of Hadadezer, Toy sent his son Joram to King David to greet him and bless him, because he had fought Hadadezer and defeated him, for Hadadezer had been at war with Toy. And Joram brought with him articles of silver, gold, and bronze. King David also consecrated these gifts to the Lord, with the silver and gold that he had consecrated from all the nations which he had subdued. From Aram, Moab, the sons of Ammon, the Philistines, Amalek, and from the spoils of Hadadezer, son of Rehob, king of Zobah. So David made a name for himself when he returned from killing 18,000 Arameans in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom. In all Edom he put garrisons, and all the Edomites became servants to David. And the Lord helped David wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel, and David administered justice and righteousness for all his people. Joab the son of Zeruiah was commander over the army, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahalud was secretary. Zadok the son of Ahitub and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar were priests, and Sariah was scribe. Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites, and David's sons were chief ministers. Then David said, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul, so that I could show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba, and they summoned him to David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, I am your servant. Then the king said, is there no one remaining of the house of Saul to whom I could show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan, one who is disabled in both feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, 
Behold, he is in the house of Mekir the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then King David sent messengers who brought him from the house of Mekir the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan the son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and prostrated himself. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Here is your servant. Then David said to him, Do not be afraid, for I will assuredly show kindness to you for the sake of your father Jonathan, and I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you yourself shall eat at my table regularly. Again he prostrated himself and said, What is your servant, that you should be concerned about a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said to him, Everything that belonged to Saul and to all his house I have given to your master's grandson. You and your sons and your servants shall cultivate the land for him, and you shall bring in the produce so that your master's grandson will have food to eat, nevertheless Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, shall eat at my table regularly. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, In accordance with everything that my lord the king commands his servant, so your servant will do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all who lived in the house of Ziba were servants to Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, because he ate at the king's table regularly. And he was disabled in his two feet. Now it happened afterward that the king of the Ammonites died, and his son Hanan became king in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanan the son of Naash, just as his father showed kindness to me. So David sent some of his servants to console him about his father. But when David's servants came to the land of the Ammonites, the commanders of the Ammonites said to their lord Hanan, do you think that David is simply honoring your father since he has sent you servants to console you? Has David not sent his servants to you in order to explore the city, to spy it out and overthrow it? So Hanan took David's servants and shaved off half of their beards, and cut off their robes in the middle as far as their buttocks, and sent them away. When messengers informed David, he sent servants to meet them, because the men were extremely humiliated. And the king said, Stay in Jericho until your beards grow back, and then you shall return. Now when the sons of Ammon saw that they had become repulsive to David, the sons of Ammon sent messengers and hired the Arameans of Beth Rehob and the Arameans of Zobah, twenty thousand foot soldiers, and the king of Makkah with a thousand men, and the men of Tob with twelve thousand men. When David heard about this, he sent Joab and all the army, the warriors. And the sons of Ammon came out and lined up for battle at the entrance of the city, while the Arameans of Zobah and of Rehob and the men of Tob and Makkah were stationed by themselves in the field. Now when Joab saw that the battle was set against him at the front and at the rear, he selected warriors from all the choice men in Israel, and lined them up against the Arameans. But the remainder of the people he placed under the command of his brother Abishai, and he lined them up against the sons of Ammon. And he said, If the Arameans are too strong for me, then you shall help me, but if the sons of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come to help you. Be strong, and let's show ourselves courageous for the sake of our people and the cities of our God and may the Lord do what is good in his sight. So Joab and the people who were with him advanced to the battle against the Arameans, and they fled from him. When the sons of Ammon saw that the Arameans had fled, they also fled from Abishai and entered the city. Then Joab returned from fighting against the sons of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. When the Arameans saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they assembled together. And Hadadezer sent word and brought out the Arameans who were beyond the Euphrates river, and they came to Helam, 
and Shobak the commander of the army of Hadadezer led them. Now when it was reported to David, he gathered all Israel together and crossed the Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Arameans lined up against David and fought him. But the Arameans fled from Israel, and David killed seven hundred charioteers of the Arameans and forty thousand horsemen, and struck Shobak the commander of their army, and he died there. When all the kings, servants of Hadadezer, saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Arameans were afraid to help the sons of Ammon anymore. Then it happened in the spring, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they brought destruction on the sons of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed in Jerusalem. Now at evening time David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful in appearance. So David sent servants and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and had her brought, and when she came to him, he slept with her, and when she had purified herself from her uncleanness, she returned to her house. 5 But the woman conceived, so she sent word and informed David, and said, I am pregnant. Then David sent word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. So Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked about Joab's well-being and that of the people, and the condition of the war. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house, and wash your feet. So Uriah left the king's house, and a gift from the king was sent after him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and did not go down to his house. 10 Now when they informed David, saying, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah are staying in temporary shelters, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Should I then go to my house to eat and drink and to sleep with my wife? By your life and the life of your soul, I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, Stay here today also, and tomorrow I will let you go back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the day after. Now David summoned Uriah, and he ate and drank in his presence, and he made Uriah drunk, and in the evening Uriah went out to lie on his bed with his lord's servants, and he still did not go down to his house. So in the morning David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. He had written in the letter the following, Station Uriah on the front line of the fiercest battle and pull back from him, so that he may be struck and killed. So it was as Joab kept watch on the city, that he stationed Uriah at the place where he knew there were valiant men. And the men of the city went out and fought against Joab, and some of the people among David's servants fell, and Uriah the Hittite also died. Then Joab sent a messenger and reported to David all the events of the war. He ordered the messenger, saying, When you have finished telling all the events of the war to the king, twenty then it shall be that if the king's wrath rises and he says to you, Why did you move against the city to fight? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who struck Abimelech the son of Jerubsheth? Did a woman not throw an upper millstone on him from the wall so that he died at Thebes? Why did you move against the wall? Then you shall say, Your servant Uriah the Hittite also died. So the messenger departed and came and reported to David everything that Joab had sent him to tell. The messenger said to David, The men prevailed against us and came out against us in the field, but we pressed them as far as the entrance of the gate. 
Also, the archers shot at your servants from the wall, so some of the king's servants died, and your servant Uriah the Hittite also died. Then David said to the messenger, This is what you shall say to Joab, Do not let this thing displease you, for the sword devours one as well as another, fight with determination against the city and overthrow it, and thereby encourage him. Now when Uriah's wife heard that her husband Uriah was dead, she mourned for her husband. When the time of mourning was over, David sent servants and had her brought to his house and she became his wife, then she bore him a son. But the thing that David had done was evil in the sight of the Lord. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David. And he came to him and said, There were two men in a city, the one wealthy and the other poor. The wealthy man had a great many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing at all except one little ewe lamb which he bought and nurtured, and it grew up together with him and his children. It would eat scraps from him and drink from his cup and lie in his lap, and was like a daughter to him. Now a visitor came to the wealthy man, and he could not bring himself to take any animal from his own flock or his own herd, to prepare for the traveler who had come to him, so he took the poor man's ewe lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger burned greatly against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this certainly deserves to die. So he must make restitution for the lamb four times over, since he did this thing and had no compassion. Nathan then said to David, You yourself are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, It is I who anointed you as king over Israel, and it is I who rescued you from the hand of Saul. I also gave you your master's house and put your master's wives into your care, and I gave you the house of Israel and Judah, and if that had been too little, I would have added to you many more things like these. Why have you despised the word of the Lord, by doing evil in his sight? You have struck and killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, you have taken his wife as your wife, and you have slaughtered him with the sword of the sons of Ammon. Now then, the sword shall never leave your house, because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. This is what the Lord says, Behold, I am going to raise up evil against you from your own household, I will even take your wives before your eyes and give them to your companion, and he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. Indeed, you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, and in open daylight. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has allowed your sin to pass, you shall not die. However, since by this deed you have shown utter disrespect for the Lord, the child himself who is born to you shall certainly die. Then Nathan went to his house. Elater the Lord struck the child that Uriah's widow bore to David, so that he was very sick. David therefore pleaded with God for the child, and David fasted and went and lay all night on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him in order to help him up from the ground, but he was unwilling and would not eat food with them. Then it happened on the seventh day that the child died. And David's servants were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was still alive, we spoke to him and he did not listen to us. How then can we tell him that the child is dead, since he might do himself harm? 19 But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David perceived that the child was dead, so David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. So David got up from the ground, washed, anointed himself, and changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and when he asked, they served him food, and he ate. Then his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while he was alive, but when the child died, you got up and ate food. And he said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who knows, the Lord may be gracious to me, and the child may live. But now he has died, why should I fast? 
Can I bring him back again? I am going to him, but he will not return to me. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and went into her and slept with her, and she gave birth to a son, and he named him Solomon. Now the Lord loved him, and sent word through Nathan the prophet, and he named him Jedidiah for the Lord's sake. Now Joab fought against Rabbah of the sons of Ammon, and captured the royal city. Then Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah, I have even captured the city of waters. Now then, gather the rest of the people and camp opposite the city and capture it, or I will capture the city myself and it will be named after me. So David gathered all the people and went to Rabbah, and he fought against it and captured it. Then he took the crown of their king from his head, and its weight was a talent of gold, and it had a precious stone, and it was placed on David's head. And he brought out the plunder of the city in great amounts. He also brought out the people who were in it, and put some to work at saws, iron picks, and iron axes, and made others serve at the brick works. And he did the same to all the cities of the sons of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Now it was after this that Absalom the son of David had a beautiful sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon the son of David was in love with her. But Amnon was so frustrated on account of his sister Tamar that he made himself ill, for she was a virgin, and it seemed too difficult to Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very clever man. And he said to him, Why are you, the king's son, so depressed morning after morning? Will you not tell me? So Amnon said to him, I am in love with Tamar, the sister of my brother Absalom. Jonadab then said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill, when your father comes to see you, say to him, Please have my sister Tamar come and give me food to eat, and have her prepare the food in my sight, so that I may see it and eat from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill, when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please have my sister Tamar come and make me a couple of pastries in my sight, so that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent a messenger to the house for Tamar, saying, Go now to your brother Amnon's house, and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was lying in bed. And she took dough, kneaded it, made pastries in his sight, and baked the pastries. Then she took the tray and served them to him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have everyone leave me. So everyone left him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the bedroom, so that I may eat from your hand. So Tamar took the pastries which she had made and brought them into the bedroom to her brother Amnon. When she brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come, sleep with me, my sister. But she said to him, No, my brother, do not violate me, for such a thing is not done in Israel, do not do this disgraceful sin. As for me, where could I get rid of my shame? And as for you, you will be like one of the fools in Israel. Now then, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. However, he would not listen to her, since he was stronger than she, he violated her and slept with her. Then Amnon hated her with a very great hatred, indeed, the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Get up, go away. But she said to him, No, because this wrong in sending me away is greater than the other that you have done to me. Yet he would not listen to her. Then he called his young man who attended him and said, Now throw this woman out of my presence, and lock the door behind her. Now she had on a long-sleeved garment, for this is how the virgin daughters of the king dressed themselves in robes. Then his attendant took her out and locked the door behind her. Tamar took ashes and put them on her head, and tore her long-sleeved garment which was on her, and she put her hand on her head and went on her way, crying out as she went. Then Absalom her brother said to her, Has Amnon your brother been with you? But now keep silent, my sister, he is your brother, do not take this matter to heart. So Tamar remained and was isolated in her brother Absalom's house. Now when King David heard about all these matters, he became very angry. But Absalom did not speak with Amnon either good or bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had violated his sister Tamar. Now it came about after two full years that Absalom had sheepshearers in Balhazer, 
which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons to celebrate. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, your servant has sheep shearers, may the king and his servants please go with your servant. 25 But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, we should not all go, so that we will not be a burden to you. Though he urged him, he would not go, but he blessed him. Then Absalom said, If not, please have my brother Amnon go with us. But the king said to him, Why should he go with you? Nevertheless Absalom urged him, so he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Then Absalom commanded his servants, saying, See now, when Amnon's heart is cheerful with wine, and I say to you, Strike Amnon, then put him to death. Do not fear, have I not commanded you myself? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did to Amnon just as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons got up and each mounted his mule and fled. Now it was while they were on the way that the report came to David, saying, Absalom has struck and killed all the king's sons, and not one of them is left. Then the king stood up, tore his clothes, and lay on the ground, and all his servants were standing by with clothes torn. And Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother, responded, Let my lord not assume that they have put to death all the young men, the king's sons, for only Amnon is dead, because this has been set up by the intent of Absalom since the day that he violated his sister Tamar. So now, may my lord the king not take the report to heart, claiming, All the king's sons are dead, but only Amnon is dead. Now Absalom had fled. And the young man who was the watchman raised his eyes and looked, and behold, many people were coming from the road behind him by the side of the mountain. And Jonadab said to the king, Behold, the king's sons have come, so it has happened according to your servant's word. As soon as he had finished speaking, behold, the king's sons came and raised their voices and wept, and the king and all his servants also wept very profusely. Now Absalom had fled and gone to Talmai the son of Amahad, the king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom had fled and gone to Geshur, and was there for three years. And the heart of King David longed to go out to Absalom, for he was comforted regarding Amnon, since he was dead. Now Joab the son of Zeruiah perceived that the king's heart was drawn toward Absalom. So Joab sent a messenger to Tico and brought a wise woman from there, and said to her, Please follow morning rites, and put on morning garments now, and do not anoint yourself with oil but be like a woman who has been mourning for the dead for many days. Then go to the king and speak to him in this way. So Joab put the words in her mouth. Now when the woman of Tico spoke to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and prostrated herself, and said, Help, O king. And the king said to her, What is troubling you? And she answered, Truly I am a widow, for my husband is dead. And your servant had two sons, but the two of them fought in the field, and there was no one to save them from each other, so one struck the other and killed him. Now behold, the entire family has risen against your servant, and they have said, Hand over the one who struck his brother, so that we may put him to death for the life of his brother whom he killed, and eliminate the heir as well. So they will extinguish my coal which is left, so as to leave my husband neither name nor remnant on the face of the earth. Then the king said to the woman, Go to your home, and I will issue orders concerning you. The woman of Tico said to the king, My lord, the king, the guilt is on me and my father's house, but the king and his throne are guiltless. So the king said, Whoever speaks to you, bring him to me, and he will not touch you any more. Then she said, May the king please remember the Lord your God, so that the avenger of blood will not continue to destroy, otherwise they will destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord lives, not one hair of your son shall fall to the ground. Then the woman said, Please let your servant speak a word to my lord the king. And he said, Speak. The woman said, why then have you planned such a thing against the people of God? For in speaking this word the king is like one who is guilty, in that the king does not bring back his banished one. 
for we will surely die and are like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be gathered up. Yet God does not take away life, but makes plans so that the banished one will not be cast out from him. Now then, the reason I have come to speak this word to my lord the king is that the people have made me afraid, so your servant said, Let me now speak to the king, perhaps the king will perform the request of his slave. For the king will listen, to save his slave from the hand of the man who would eliminate both me and my son from the inheritance of God. Then your servant said, Please let the word of my lord the king be comforting, for as the angel of God, so is my lord the king to discern good and evil. And may the Lord your God be with you. Then the king answered and said to the woman, Please do not hide anything from me that I am about to ask you. And the woman said, Let my lord the king please speak. So the king said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all this? And the woman replied, As your soul lives, my lord the king, no one can turn to the right or to the left from anything that my lord the king has spoken. Indeed, it was your servant Joab who commanded me, and it was he who put all these words in the mouth of your servant. In order to change the appearance of things your servant Joab has done this thing. But my lord is wise, like the wisdom of the angel of God, to know all that is on the earth. Then the king said to Joab, Behold now, I will certainly do this thing, go then, bring back the young man Absalom. And Joab fell on his face to the ground, prostrated himself, and blessed the king, then Joab said, Today your servant knows that I have found favor in your sight, my lord the king, in that the king has performed the request of his servant. So Joab arose and went to Geshur, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. However, the king said, He shall return to his own house, but he shall not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house and did not see the king's face. Now in all Israel there was no one as handsome as Absalom, so highly praised, from the sole of his foot to the top of his head there was no impairment in him. And when he cut the hair of his head, and it was at the end of every year that he cut it, because it was heavy on him, so he cut it, he weighed the hair of his head at two hundred shekels by the king's weight. And to Absalom there were born three sons, and one daughter whose name was Tamar, she was a woman of beautiful appearance. Now Absalom lived two full years in Jerusalem, yet he did not see the king's face. Then Absalom sent for Joab, to send him to the king, but he would not come to him. So he sent word again a second time, but he would not come. Therefore he said to his servants, See, Joab's plot is next to mine, and he has barley there, go and set it on fire. So Absalom's servants set the plot on fire. Then Joab got up, came to Absalom at his house, and said to him, Why have your servants set my plot on fire? Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent for you, saying, Come here, so that I may send you to the king, to say, Why have I come from Geshur? It would be better for me still to be there. Now then, let me see the king's face, and if there is guilt in me, he can have me executed. So when Joab came to the king and told him, he summoned Absalom. Then Absalom came to the king and prostrated himself with his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. Now it came about after this that Absalom provided for himself a chariot and horses, and fifty men to run ahead of him. And Absalom used to rise early and stand beside the road to the gate, and when any man who had a lawsuit was to come before the king for judgment, Absalom would call out to him and say, from what city are you? And he would say, Your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, See, your claims are good and right, but you have no one to listen to you on the part of the king. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh that someone would appoint me judge in the land, 
Then every man who has a lawsuit or claim could come to me, and I would give him justice. And whenever a man approached to prostrate himself before him, he would put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. Absalom dealt this way with all Israel who came to the king for judgment, so Absalom stole the hearts of the people of Israel. Now it came about at the end of four years that Absalom said to the king, Please let me go and pay my vow which I have made to the Lord, in Hebron. For your servant made a vow while I was living in Geshur in Aram, saying, If the Lord will indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. The king said to him, Go in peace. So he got up and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom is king in Hebron. Then two hundred men went with Absalom from Jerusalem, who were invited and went innocently, for they did not know anything. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Jilonite, David's counselor, from his city Jilo, while he was offering the sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people continually increased with Absalom. Then a messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the people of Israel are with Absalom. So David said to all his servants who were with him in Jerusalem, Arise and let's flee, for otherwise none of us will escape from Absalom. Go quickly, or he will hurry and overtake us, and bring disaster on us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. Then the king's servants said to the king, Behold, your servants will do whatever my lord the king chooses. So the king left, and all his household with him, but the king left ten concubines behind to take care of the house. The king left, and all the people with him, and they stopped at the last house. Now all of his servants passed by beside him, and all the Cherethites, all the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men who had come with him from Gath, passed by before the king. Then the king said to Atai the Gittite, Why should you go with us too? Return and stay with your king, since you are a foreigner and an exile as well, return to your own place. You came only yesterday, so should I make you wander with us today, while I go wherever I go? Return and take your brothers back, mercy and truth be with you. But Atai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, wherever my lord the king may be, whether for death or for life, there assuredly shall your servant be. Then David said to Atai, Go and cross over the brook Kidron. So Atai the Gittite crossed over with all his men and all the little ones who were with him. While all the country was weeping with a loud voice, all the people were crossing over. The king was also crossing over the brook Kidron, and all the people were crossing over toward the way of the wilderness. Now behold, Zadok also came, and all the Levites with him, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of God. And they set down the Ark of God, and Abiathar came up until all the people had finished crossing over from the city. And the king said to Zadok, Return the Ark of God to the city. If I find favor in the sight of the Lord, then he will bring me back and show me both it and his habitation. But if he says this, I have no delight in you, then here I am, let him do to me as seems good to him. The king also said to Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Return to the city in peace, and your two sons with you, your son Ahamaz and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, I am going to wait at the river crossing places of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. So Zadok and Abiathar returned the ark of God to Jerusalem and remained there. And David was going up the ascent of the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went, and his head was covered, and he was walking barefoot. Then all the people who were with him each covered his own head, and they were going up, weeping as they went. Now someone informed David, saying, 
Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, Lord, please make the advice of Ahithophel foolish. It happened as David was coming to the summit, where God was worshipped, that behold, Hushai the archite met him with his coat torn, and dust on his head. And David said to him, If you go over with me, then you will become a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, even as I was your father's servant in time past, so now I will also be your servant, then you can foil the advice of Ahithophel for me. Are Zadok and Abiathar the priests not with you there? So it shall be that whatever you hear from the king's house, you shall report to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold their two sons are there with them, Ahamaz, Zadok's son and Jonathan, Abiathar's son, and by them you shall send me everything that you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Now when David had gone on a little beyond the summit, behold, Ziba the servant of Methobosheth met him with a team of saddled donkeys, and on them were two hundred loaves of bread, a hundred cakes of raisins, a hundred summer fruits, and a jug of wine. And the king said to Ziba, Why do you have these? And Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride, the bread and summer fruit are for the young men to eat, and the wine, for whoever is weary in the wilderness to drink. Then the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is staying in Jerusalem, for he said, Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. So the king said to Ziba, Behold, all that belongs to Methobosheth is yours. And Ziba said, I prostrate myself, may I find favor in your sight, my lord, the king. When King David came to Behurim, behold, a man was coming out from there from the family of the house of Saul, and his name was Shimi, the son of Gera, he was coming out, cursing as he came. He also threw stones at David and all the servants of King David, and all the people and all the warriors were on his right and on his left. This is what Shimi said when he cursed, Go away, go away, you man of bloodshed and worthless man. The Lord has brought back upon you all the bloodshed of the house of Saul, in whose place you have become king, and the Lord has handed the kingdom over to your son Absalom. And behold, you are caught in your own evil, for you are a man of bloodshed. Then Abishai the son of Zeruiah said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Now let me go over and cut off his head. But the king said, What business of mine is yours, you sons of Zeruiah? If he curses, and if the Lord has told him, Curse David, then who should say, Why have you done so? Then David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son who came out of my own body seeks my life, how much more now this Benjaminite? Leave him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has told him. Perhaps the Lord will look on my misery and return good to me instead of his cursing this day. So David and his men went on the road, and Shimi kept going on the hillside close beside him, and as he went he cursed and threw stones and dirt at him. And the king and all the people who were with him arrived exhausted, and he refreshed himself there. Then Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, entered Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with him. Now it came about, when Hushai the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king! Long live the king! But Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? So Hushai said to Absalom, No. For whomever the Lord, this people, and all the men of Israel have chosen, his I shall be, and with him I shall remain. Besides, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? 
Just as I have served in your father's presence, so I shall be in your presence. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give your advice. What should we do? 21 Ahithophel said to Absalom, Have relations with your father's concubines, whom he has left behind to take care of the house, then all Israel will hear that you have made yourself repulsive to your father. The hands of all who are with you will also be strengthened. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the roof, and Absalom had relations with his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Now the advice of Ahithophel, which he gave in those days, was taken as though one inquired of the word of God, so was all the advice of Ahithophel regarded by both David and Absalom. Furthermore, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Please let me choose twelve thousand men and let me set out and pursue David tonight. And I will attack him while he is weary and exhausted and startle him, so that all the people who are with him will flee. Then I will strike and kill the king when he is alone, three and I will bring all the people back to you. The return of everyone depends on the man whom you are seeking, then all the people will be at peace. And the plan pleased Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Nevertheless, Absalom said, Now call Hushai the Archite also, and let's hear what he has to say. When Hushai had come to Absalom, Absalom said to him, Ahithophel has proposed this plan. Should we carry out his plan? If not, say so yourself. So Hushai said to Absalom, This time the advice that Ahithophel has given is not good. Then Hushai said, You yourself know your father and his men, that they are warriors and they are fierce, like a bear deprived of her cubs in the field. And your father is an expert in warfare, and he will not spend the night with the people. Behold, he has now hidden himself in one of the ravines, or in another place, and it will be that when he falls on them at the first attack, whoever hears it will say, There has been a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. And even the one who is valiant, whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will completely despair, for all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and those who are with him are valiant men. But I advise that all Israel be fully gathered to you, from Dan even to Beersheba, like the sand that is by the sea in abundance and that you personally go into battle. Then we will come to him in one of the places where he can be found, and we will fall on him just as the dew falls on the ground, and of him and of all the men who are with him, not even one will be left. And if he withdraws into a city, then all Israel shall bring ropes to that city, and we will drag it into the valley until not even a pebble is found there. 14 Then Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the advice of Hushai the Archite is better than the advice of Ahithophel. For the Lord had ordained to foil the good advice of Ahithophel, in order for the Lord to bring disaster on Absalom. Then Hushai said to Zadok and to Abiathar of the priests, This is what Ahithophel advised Absalom and the elders of Israel to do, and this is what I have advised. Now then, send a messenger quickly and tell David, saying, do not spend the night at the river crossing places of the wilderness, but by all means cross over, or else the king and all the people who are with him will be destroyed. Now Jonathan and Ahamaz were staying at Enrogel, and a female servant would go and inform them, and they would go and inform King David, for they could not allow themselves to be seen entering the city. But a boy did see them, and he told Absalom, so the two of them left quickly and came to the house of a man in Bahurim, who had a well in his courtyard, and they went down into it. And the woman took a cover and spread it over the well's mouth and scattered barley meal on it, so that nothing was known. Then Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house and said, Where are Ahamaz and Jonathan? And the woman said to them, They have crossed the brook of water. And when they searched and did not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. It came about after they had departed, that they came up out of the well and went and reported to King David, and they said to David, Set out and cross over the water quickly, because this is what Ahithophel has advised against you. Then David and all the people who were with him set out and crossed the Jordan, by dawn not even one remained who had not crossed the Jordan. 
Now when Ahithophel saw that his advice had not been followed, he saddled his donkey and set out and went to his home, to his city, and set his house in order, and hanged himself, so he died and was buried in his father's grave. Then David came to Mahanaim. And Absalom crossed the Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. Absalom put Amasa in command of the army in place of Joab. Now Amasa was the son of a man whose name was Ithra the Israelite, who had relations with Abigail the daughter of Naash, sister of Zeruiah, Joab's mother. And Israel and Absalom camped in the land of Gilead. Now when David had come to Mahanaim, Shobi the son of Naash from Rabbah of the sons of Ammon, Makir the son of Amiel from Lodabar, and Barzillai the Gileadite from Rojlam. Brought beds, basins, pottery, wheat, barley, flour, roasted grain, beans, lentils, roasted seeds. Honey, curds, sheep, and cheese of the herd, for David and the people who were with him, to eat. For they said, The people are hungry and exhausted and thirsty in the wilderness. Then David took account of the people who were with him and appointed over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. And David sent the people out, a third under the command of Joab, a third under the command of Abishai the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and a third under the command of Atai the Gittite. And the king said to the people, I myself will certainly go out with you also. But the people said, You should not go out, for if in fact we flee, they will not care about us, and if half of us die, they will not care about us. But you are worth ten thousand of us, so now it is better that you will be ready to help us from the city. Then the king said to them, Whatever seems best to you I will do. So the king stood beside the gate, and all the people went out by hundreds and thousands. But the king commanded Joab, Abishai, and Atai, saying, Deal gently with the young man Absalom for my sake. And all the people heard when the king commanded all the commanders regarding Absalom. Then the people went out to the field against Israel, and the battle took place in the forest of Ephraim. The people of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter there that day was great, twenty thousand men. For the battle there was spread over the whole countryside, and the forest devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. Now Absalom encountered the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the branches of a massive oak. Then his head caught firmly in the oak, and he was left hanging between the sky and earth, while the mule that was under him kept going. When a certain man saw him, he informed Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in an oak. Then Joab said to the man who had informed him, So behold, you saw him. Why then did you not strike him there to the ground? And it would have been my duty to give you ten pieces of silver and a belt. But the man said to Joab, Even if I were to receive a thousand pieces of silver in my hand, I would not put out my hand against the king's son, for in our hearing the king commanded you, Abishai, and Atai, saying, Protect the young man Absalom for me. Otherwise, if I had dealt treacherously against his life, and there is nothing hidden from the king, then you yourself would have avoided me. Then Joab said, I will not waste time here with you. So he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was still alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men who carried Joab's armor gathered around and struck Absalom and killed him. Then Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing Israel, for Joab restrained the people. And they took Absalom and threw him into a deep pit in the forest, and erected over him a very large pile of stones. And all Israel fled, each to his own tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and set up for himself a memorial stone, which is in the king's valley, for he said, I have no son to continue my name. So he named the memorial stone after his own name, and it is called Absalom's monument to this day. Then Ahamaz the son of Zadok said, Please let me run and bring the king news that the Lord has freed him from the hand of his enemies. But Joab said to him, You are not the man to bring news this day, but you shall bring news another day, however, you shall bring no news this day, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go, tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed to Joab and ran. However, Ahamaz the son of Zadok said once more to Joab, But whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. And Joab said, Why would you run, my son? 
since you will have no messenger's reward for going. But whatever happens, he said, I will run. So he said to him, Run. Then Ahamaz ran by way of the plain and passed by the Cushite. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went to the roof of the gate by the wall, and raised his eyes and looked, and behold, a man was running by himself. So the watchman called out and told the king. And the king said, If he is by himself there is good news in his mouth. And he came nearer and nearer. Then the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called to the gatekeeper and said, Behold, another man is running by himself. And the king said, This one also is bringing good news. The watchman said, I think the running form of the first one is like the running form of Ahamaz the son of Zadok. And the king said, This is a good man, and he is coming with good news. Then Ahamaz called out and said to the king, All is well. And he prostrated himself before the king with his face to the ground. And he said, Blessed is the Lord your God, who has turned over the men who raised their hands against my lord the king. But the king said, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And Ahamaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and your servant, I saw a great commotion, but I did not know what it was. Then the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. Then behold, the Cushite arrived, and the Cushite said, Let my lord the king receive good news, for the Lord has freed you this day from the hand of all those who rose up against you. Then the king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And the Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king, and all who rise up against you for evil, be like that young man. Then the king trembled and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And this is what he said as he walked, My son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. If only I had died instead of you, Absalom, my son, my son. Then it was reported to Joab, Behold, the king is weeping and he mourns for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people, because the people heard it said that day, The king is in mourning over his son. And the people entered the city surreptitiously that day, just as people who are humiliated surreptitiously flee in battle. And the king covered his face and cried out with a loud voice, My son Absalom, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab came into the house to the king and said, Today you have shamed all your servants, who have saved your life today and the lives of your sons and daughters, the lives of your wives, and the lives of your concubines, six by loving those who hate you, and by hating those who love you. For you have revealed today that commanders and servants are nothing to you, for I know today that if Absalom were alive and all of us were dead today, then it would be right as far as you are concerned. Now therefore arise, go out and speak kindly to your servants, for I swear by the Lord, if you do not go out, no man will stay the night with you, and this will be worse for you than all the misfortune that has happened to you from your youth until now. So the king got up and sat at the gate. When they told all the people, saying, Behold, the king is sitting at the gate, then all the people came before the king. Now Israel had fled, each to his tent. And all the people were quarreling throughout the tribes of Israel, saying, The king rescued us from the hands of our enemies and saved us from the hands of the Philistines, but now he has fled out of the land from Absalom. However, Absalom, whom we anointed over us, has died in battle. Now then, why are you silent about bringing the king back? Then King David sent word to Zadok and Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house, since the word of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house? You are my brothers. You are my bone and my flesh. Why then should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, Are you not my bone and my flesh? May God do so to me, and more so, if you will not be commander of the army for me continually, in place of Joab. So he turned the hearts of all the men of Judah as one man, so that they sent word to the king, saying, Return you and all your servants. 
The king then returned and came as far as the Jordan. And the men of Judah came to Gilgal in order to go to meet the king, to escort the king across the Jordan. Then Shimei the son of Gera, the Benjaminite who was from Bahurim, hurried and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him, and they rushed to the Jordan before the king. Then they crossed the shallow places repeatedly to bring over the king's household, and to do what was good in his sight. And Shimei the son of Gera fell down before the king as he was about to cross the Jordan. And he said to the king, May my lord not consider me guilty, nor call to mind what your servant did wrong on the day when my lord the king went out from Jerusalem, so that the king would take it to heart. Twenty for your servant knows that I have sinned, so behold, I have come today, the first of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. 21 But Abishai the son of Zeruiah responded, Should Shimei not be put to death for this, the fact that he cursed the Lord's anointed? David then said, What is there between you and me, you sons of Zeruiah, that you should be an adversary to me today? Should anyone be put to death in Israel today? For do I not know that I am king over Israel today? So the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. The king also swore to him. Then Mephibosheth the grandson of Saul came down to meet the king, but he had neither tended to his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes since the day the king departed until the day he came home in peace. 25 And it was when he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? So he said, my lord the king, my servant betrayed me, for your servant said, I will saddle the donkey for myself so that I may ride on it and go with the king, since your servant cannot walk. Furthermore, he has slandered your servant to my lord the king, but my lord the king is like the angel of God, therefore do what is good in your sight. For all my father's household was only people worthy of death to my lord the king, yet you placed your servant among those who ate at your own table. So what right do I still have, that I should complain any more to the king? So the king said to him, Why do you still speak of your affairs? I have decided, you and Ziba shall divide the land. And Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him even take it all, since my lord the king has come safely to his own house. Now Barzillai the Gileadite had come down from Rogelim, and he went on to the Jordan with the king to escort him over the Jordan. Barzillai was very old, eighty years old, and he had provided the king food while he stayed in Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. So the king said to Barzillai, You cross over with me, and I will provide you food in Jerusalem with me. But Barzillai said to the king, how long do I still have to live, that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am now eighty years old. Can I distinguish between good and bad? Or can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Or can I still hear the voice of men and women singing? Why then should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant would merely cross over the Jordan with the king. So why should the king compensate me with this reward? Please let your servant return, so that I may die in my own city near the grave of my father and my mother. However, here is your servant Chimam, let him cross over with my lord the king, and do for him what is good in your sight. And the king answered, Chimam shall cross over with me, and I will do for him what is good in your sight, and whatever you require of me, I will do for you. All the people crossed over the Jordan and the king crossed too. The king then kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his place. Now the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimam went on with him, and all the people of Judah and also half the people of Israel accompanied the king. 41 And behold, 
All the men of Israel came to the king and said to the king, Why have our brothers, the men of Judah, abducted you and brought the king and his household and all David's men with him, over the Jordan? Then all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is a close relative to us. Why then are you angry about this matter? Have we eaten at all at the king's expense, or has anything been taken for us? But the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten parts in the king, therefore we also have more claim on David than you. Why then did you treat us with contempt? Was it not our advice first to bring back our king? Yet the words of the men of Judah were harsher than the words of the men of Israel. Now a worthless man happened to be there whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjaminite, and he blew the trumpet and said, We have no share in David, nor do we have an inheritance in the son of Jesse, every man to his tents, Israel. So all the men of Israel withdrew from following David and followed Sheba the son of Bichri, but the men of Judah remained loyal to their king, from the Jordan even to Jerusalem. Then David came to his house in Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, the concubines whom he had left behind to take care of the house, and put them in custody and provided them with food, but did not have relations with them. So they were locked up until the day of their death, living as widows. Now the king said to Amasa, Summon the men of Judah for me within three days, and be present here yourself. So Amasa went to summon the men of Judah, but he was delayed longer than the set time which he had designated for him. And David said to Abishai, Now Sheba the son of Bichri will do us more harm than Absalom, take your lord's servants and pursue him, so that he does not find for himself fortified cities and escape from our sight. So Joab's men went out after him, along with the Cherethites, the Pelethites, and all the warriors, and they left Jerusalem to pursue Sheba the son of Bichri. When they were at the large stone which is in Gibeon, Amasa came to meet them. Now Joab was dressed in his military attire, and over it he had a belt with a sword in its sheath strapped on at his waist, and as he went forward, it fell out. And Joab said to Amasa, Is it going well for you, my brother? And Joab took hold of Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. But Amasa was not on guard against the sword which was in Joab's hand, so he struck him in the belly with it and spilled out his intestines on the ground, and did not strike him again, and he died. Then Joab and his brother Abishai pursued Sheba the son of Bichri. Now one of Joab's young men stood by him and said, Whoever favors Joab and whoever is for David, follow Joab. But Amasa was wallowing in his own blood in the middle of the road. And when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa from the road to the field and threw a garment over him when he saw that everyone who came by him stood still. As soon as he was removed from the road, all the men went on after Joab to pursue Sheba the son of Bichri. Now he went on through all the tribes of Israel to Abel, that is, Beth Maka, and all the Barrets, and they assembled and went after him as well. And they came and besieged him in Abel Beth Maka, and they built up an assault ramp against the city, and it stood against the outer rampart, and all the people who were with Joab were wreaking destruction in order to topple the wall. Then a wise woman called out from the city, Listen, listen. Please tell Joab, Come here that I may speak with you. So he approached her, and the woman said, Are you Joab? And he answered, I am. Then she said to him, Listen to the words of your slave. And he said, I am listening. Then she spoke, saying, In the past they used to say, they will undoubtedly ask advice at Abel, and that is how they ended a dispute. I am one of those who are ready for peace and faithful in Israel. You are trying to destroy a city, even a mother in Israel. 
Why would you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? Joab replied, Far be it, far be it from me that I would consume or destroy. Such is not the case. But a man from the hill country of Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bichri by name, has raised his hand against King David. Only turn him over, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said to Joab, Behold, his head will be thrown to you over the wall. Then the woman wisely came to all the people. And they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bichri and threw it to Joab. So he blew the trumpet, and they were dispersed from the city, each to his tent. Joab also returned to the king at Jerusalem. Now Joab was in command of the entire army of Israel, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And Aduram was over the forced labor, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahalud was the secretary. And Shiva was scribe, and Zadok and Abiathar were priests. Ira the Jairite also was a priest to David. Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David sought the presence of the Lord. And the Lord said, It is because of Saul and his bloody house, because he put the Gibeonites to death. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them, now the Gibeonites were not of the sons of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites, and the sons of Israel had made a covenant with them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the sons of Israel and Judah. David said to the Gibeonites, What should I do for you? And how can I make amends, so that you will bless the inheritance of the Lord? Then the Gibeonites said to him, for us it is not a matter of silver or gold with Saul or his house, nor is it for us to put anyone to death in Israel. Nevertheless David said, I will do for you whatever you say. So they said to the king, The man who destroyed us and who planned to eliminate us so that we would not exist within any border of Israel. Let seven men from his sons be given to us, and we will hang them before the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, the chosen of the Lord. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the oath of the Lord which was between them, between David and Saul's son Jonathan. So the king took the two sons of Rizpah the daughter of Aiah, Armani and Mephibosheth whom she had borne to Saul, and the five sons of Merab the daughter of Saul, whom she had borne to Adriel the son of Barzillai the Mahalathite. Then he handed them over to the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the mountain before the Lord, so that the seven of them fell together, and they were put to death in the first days of harvest at the beginning of barley harvest. And Rizpah the daughter of Aiah took sackcloth and spread it out for herself on the rock, from the beginning of harvest until it rained on them from the sky and she allowed neither the birds of the sky to rest on them by day nor the wild animals by night. When it was reported to David what Rizpah the daughter of Aiah, the concubine of Saul, had done. Then David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan from the citizens of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the public square of Bethshan where the Philistines had hanged them on the day the Philistines struck and killed Saul in Gilboa. He brought up from there the bones of Saul and the bones of his son Jonathan, and they gathered the bones of those who had been hanged. Then they buried the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan in the country of Benjamin in Zela, in the grave of his father Kish, so they did everything that the king commanded, and after that God responded to prayer for the land. Now when the Philistines were at war with Israel again, David went down, and his servants with him, and when they fought against the Philistines, David became weary. Then Ishbi Benab, who was among the descendants of the giant, the weight of whose spear was three hundred shekels of bronze in weight, had strapped on a new sword, and he intended to kill David. But Abishai the son of Zeruiah helped him, and struck the Philistine and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, 
You shall not go out again with us to battle, so that you do not extinguish the lamp of Israel. Now it came about after this that there was war again with the Philistines at Gob, then Sibekai the Hushethite struck and killed Saph, who was among the descendants of the giant. And there was war with the Philistines again at Gob, and Elhanan the son of Jerorajim the Bethlehemite killed Goliath the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was war at Gath again, where there was a man of great stature who had six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he also had been born to the giant. When he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimei, David's brother, struck and killed him. These four were born to the giant at Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Now David spoke the words of this song to the Lord on the day that the Lord had saved him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death encompassed me, the floods of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Sheol surrounded me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord, yes, I called out to my God, and from his temple he heard my voice, and my cry for help came into his ears. Then the earth shook and quaked, the foundations of heaven were trembling and were shaken, because he was angry. Smoke went up out of his nostrils, and fire from his mouth was devouring, coals were kindled by it. He also bowed the heavens down low, and came down with thick darkness under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew, he appeared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness canopies around him, a mass of waters, thick clouds of the sky. Thirteen from the brightness before him coals of fire were kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he shot arrows and scattered them, lightning, and routed them. Then the channels of the sea appeared, the foundations of the world were exposed by the rebuke of the Lord, from the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from on high, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me on the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into an open place, he rescued me, because he delighted in me. The Lord has treated me in accordance with my righteousness, in accordance with the cleanliness of my hands he has repaid me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not acted wickedly against my God. For all his ordinances were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not deviate from them. I was also blameless toward him, and I have kept myself from my wrongdoing. So the Lord has repaid me in accordance with my righteousness, in accordance with my cleanliness before his eyes. With the one who is faithful you show yourself faithful, with the blameless one you prove yourself blameless. With the one who is pure you show yourself pure, but with the perverted you show yourself astute. And you save an afflicted people, but your eyes are on the haughty whom you humiliate. For you are my lamp, Lord, and the Lord illuminates my darkness. For by you I can run at a troop of warriors, by my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is blameless, the word of the Lord is refined, he is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God, except the Lord? And who is a rock, except our God? God is my strong fortress, and he sets the blameless on his way. He makes my feet like deer's feet, and sets me on my high places. He trains my hands for battle, 
so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation, and your help makes me great. You enlarge my steps under me, and my feet have not slipped. I pursued my enemies and eliminated them, and I did not turn back until they were finished off. And I have devoured them and smashed them, so that they would not rise, and they fell under my feet. For you have encircled me with strength for battle, you have forced those who rose up against me to bow down under me. You have also made my enemies turn their backs to me, and I destroyed those who hated me. They looked, but there was no one to save them, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I pulverized them as the dust of the earth, I crushed and trampled them like the mud of the streets. You have also saved me from the contentions of my people, you have kept me as head of the nations, a people I have not known serve me. Foreigners pretend to obey me, as soon as they hear, they obey me. Foreigners lose heart, and come trembling out of their fortresses. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be my God, the rock of my salvation. The God who executes vengeance for me, and brings down peoples under me. Who also brings me out from my enemies, you also raise me above those who rise up against me, you rescue me from the violent person. Therefore I will give thanks to you, Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praises to your name. 51 He is a tower of salvation to his king, and shows favor to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Now these are the last words of David. David the son of Jesse declares, the man who was raised on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel, declares. The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me, and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel said it, the Rock of Israel spoke to me, he who rules over mankind righteously, who rules in the fear of God is like the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds, when the fresh grass springs out of the earth from sunshine after rain. Is my house not indeed so with God? For he has made an everlasting covenant with me, properly ordered in all things, and secured, for will he not indeed make all my salvation and all my delight grow? But the worthless, every one of them, are like scattered thorns, because they cannot be taken in hand. Instead, the man who touches them must be armed with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they will be completely burned with fire in their place. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had, Joshua Bashabeth, a Tachemonite, chief of the captains, he was called Adino the Esnite because of eight hundred who were killed by him at one time. And after him was Eleazar the son of Dodo the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there to battle and the men of Israel had withdrawn. He rose up and struck the Philistines until his hand was weary and it clung to the sword, and the Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to plunder the dead. Now after him was Shammah the son of Aji, a Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered into an army where there was a plot of land full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he took his stand in the midst of the plot, defended it, and struck the Philistines, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Then three of the thirty chief men went down and came to David at harvest time to the cave of Adullam, while the army of the Philistines was camping in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, while the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David had a craving and said, Oh that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem which is by the gate. So the three mighty men forced their way into the camp of the Philistines, and drew water from the well of Bethlehem which was by the gate, and carried it and brought it to David. Yet he would not drink it, but poured it out as an offering to the Lord. And he said, Far be it from me, Lord, that I would do this. Should I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their lives? So he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. Now Abishai, the brother of Joab, 
the son of Zeruiah, was chief of the thirty. And he swung his spear against three hundred and killed them, and had a name as well as the three. He was the most honored among the thirty, so he became their commander, however, he did not attain to the reputation of the three. Then Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kebzeel, who had done great deeds, killed the two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and killed a lion in the middle of a pit on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, an impressive man. Now the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a club and snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with his own spear. These things Benaiah the son of Jehoiada did, and had a name as well as the three mighty men. He was honored among the thirty, but he did not attain the reputation of the three. And David appointed him over his bodyguard. Asahel the brother of Joab was among the thirty, and there was Elhanan the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Shammah the Herodite, Elika the Herodite. Helez the Paltite, Ira the son of Ikesh the Tekoite. Abizar the Anathathite, Mebani the Hushathite. Zalman the Ahohite, Maharai the Netophathite. Helab the son of Bana the Netophathite, Itai the son of Ribai of Gibeah of the sons of Benjamin. Benaiah a Parathonite, Hiddai of the brooks of Gash. Abialban the Arbathite, Asmaveth the Baramite. Eliabah the Shalbanite, the sons of Jashan, Jonathan. Shema the Hararite, Ahiam the son of Sherar the Ararite. Eliphalet the son of Ahazbi, the son of the Machathite, Eliam the son of Ahithophel the Jilonite. Hezro the Carmelite, Parai the Arbite. Egal the son of Nathan of Zobah, Bani the Gadite. Zelek the Ammonite, Naharai the Birathite, armor bearers of Joab the son of Zeruiah. Ira the Ithrite, Garib the Ithrite. And Uriah the Hittite, thirty seven in all. Now the anger of the Lord burned against Israel again, and he incited David against them to say, Go, count Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab the commander of the army, who was with him, Roam about now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and conduct a census of the people, so that I may know the number of the people. But Joab said to the king, May the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times as many as they are, while the eyes of my lord the king can still see, but why does my lord the king delight in this thing? Nevertheless, the king's order prevailed against Joab and against the commanders of the army. So Joab and the commanders of the army left the presence of the king to conduct a census of the people of Israel. They crossed the Jordan and camped in Aror, on the right side of the city that is in the middle of the valley of Gad and toward Jazer. Then they came to Gilead and to the land of Totem Hachi, and they came to Danjon and around to Sidon. Then they came to the fortress of Tyre and to all the cities of the Hivites and of the Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Judah, to Beersheba. So when they had roamed about through the whole land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab gave the number of the census of the people to the king, in Israel there were eight hundred thousand valiant men who drew the sword, and the men of Judah were five hundred thousand men. Now David's heart troubled him after he had counted the people. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now, Lord, please overlook the guilt of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. 11 When David got up in the morning, the word of the Lord came to Gad the prophet, David's seer, saying, Go and speak to David, this is what the Lord says, I am imposing upon you three choices, choose for yourself one of them, and I will do it to you. So Gad came to David and told him, and said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land? Or will you flee for three months before your enemies while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days of plague in your land? Now consider and see what answer I shall return to him who sent me. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let us now fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, but do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning until the appointed time, and seventy thousand men of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. When the angel extended his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented of the disaster and said to the angel who destroyed the people, It is enough. Now drop your hand. 
And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Araunah the Jebusite. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel who was striking down the people, and said, Behold, it is I who have sinned, and it is I who have done wrong, but these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand be against me and against my father's house. So Gad came to David that day and said to him, Go up, erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Araunah the Jebusite. Then David went up in accordance with the word of Gad, just as the Lord had commanded. And Araunah looked down and saw the king and his servants crossing over toward him, so Araunah went out and bowed his face to the ground before the king. Then Araunah said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor from you, in order to build an altar to the Lord, so that the plague may be withdrawn from the people. Araunah then said to David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what is good in his sight. Look, here are the oxen for the burnt offering, the threshing sledges and the yokes of the oxen for the wood. Everything, O king, Araunah gives to the king. And Araunah said to the king, May the Lord your God be favorable to you. However, the king said to Araunah, No, but I will certainly buy it from you for a price, for I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. Then David built there an altar to the Lord, and he offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord responded to prayer for the land, and the plague was withdrawn from Israel.